Welcome to Check In. And here we are in the hot spot. And guess who's back again? And as we usually say, like, we never left. And in this case, like, she never left. Come through a pandemic, come through the storms, come through it all. And here we are sitting in the hot seat. And I have a wonderful guest who's known to a lot of you here on our check in sessions. But guess what? There's something new that needs to be shared today. There's some new information, there's some updates. So get ready, sit back, relax. And as we always say, participate, don't speculate. Because God might have something for you right there and right now. So open your heart because I believe that there's a word for you. And so today, I have my friend, my big sister, my mentor, Sister Marion Obura, who's here with us, a kingdom woman. Wow. Let me not go any further. Welcome. How are you? <laughs> Thank you. I was like, who is he introducing? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me back. Yeah. How's it going, though? Oh, it is good. It is good. Um, we released the song like three days ago, and I'm, so I'm still living in that... Um, space and replaying and replaying and replaying and, mm -hmm. and just thanking God for everything that he enabled us to to accomplish as a team. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's been a journey. Uh, yeah. Imagine. Yep. Yeah. And how's that been so far? Oh, wow. It's, it's been a long journey, mm -hmm. I will say. And if you could just take this year, for instance, um, you know, as I said in my other video, that uh, I got I got this song in, in in March this year, and we were so sure that we would just take about a month to put it together, meet with the vocalists for uh, three weeks, and then record in May. It was slam dunk, right? And uh, that didn't happen, mm -hmm. and so we we found out that we we're making a few mistakes vocally, and you know, got a voice coach to come on board and then we had to work again and work again. And then we were ready to record, I think in June. Mm -hmm. And then one of our team members had to travel back home. I think it was to Congo mm -hmm. and we had to wait. Um, one of the vocalists also got sick. Sharon got sick and had to have a surgery. And so we couldn't go on. And so I just released it and said, God, this is your project. It will come out at the right time. And just relaxed and, and just released it to God. And so for, you know, Eloge to come back, you know, I was like, are you sure you're coming back? <laughs> like, are you coming back? Yeah. He's like, yeah, I'm coming back. And so he comes back and then uh, Sharon does come, gets better, but she has to stay off singing for a while. Mm -hmm. And that made us now bring in Benzi, uh, who at the moment, at that time, was mainly uh, playing manager, treasurer. And so I was like, you know, you have to come in because now Sharon is not in. And little did we know that having Benzi on board would even make the team stronger right. uh, vocally. And, um, and then Sharon was able to come. And now we're able to say, OK, we're going to record on this day. And we wanted to record on a Friday or a Thursday night and then Amp Studios was fully booked, and so we had to record on a Monday. Mm. And I was like, "That's not. That's even. That's so unnatural. Like you don't record on a Monday." Mm. And so I remember having to call the team up after a Sunday service and saying, "Guys, this is the date we have available." And the reason we had to do it in July is because the Harare Convention was coming on the fifth of August. And I right. had I had this thing in me that was like, one or two of us will travel for that thing. So if we don't record it in July, it's another, it's another I don't know how many weeks. And lo and behold, the, the person who ends up <laughs> traveling is, is, is Mark, who is responsible for all production. Right. Um, but yes, yeah, so we, we met and most of my vocalists work. And so I had to have them, can you ask for a day off the following day? Because we'll you know, practice. I mean, we'll be in the studio for a while. And so even after getting that confirmation, even after paying, I was like, God, I don't know. Let's yeah. wait and see. I yeah. mean, I'm open to being obedient and, and just going with the flow. Yes, I do want us to record, but I know you have my best interest at heart. And so there's a lot of messages going on. I think Bishop was preaching a lot about 
hearing obedience, mm. being obedient to the call. And I remember him giving an example of what happens when, you know, you're a brother and you've decided you want to take your family to the village. And then you say, you know, I'm going to pass by yeah. and see the man of God. And then he tells you, I think I want you to stay behind. I'm like, gosh, <laughs> Lord, <laughs> I hope that is not me because I have more than 20 people on this project yeah. who have all, you know, yeah, all be on the bus ready for the 20, 25th, 26th. So, yeah. Um, so yes, and then it was important for me to get his, 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 his blessing, uh, for this project. It was important for me to get my father's blessing. And for some reason, I just was not able to get my dad. Uh, we, we just, our schedules were so different. Right. And I think the Friday before is when we found ourselves in the office. And he was in the office and I was in the office and I was just using the boardroom and we bumped into each other and, yeah. and there it was. Wow. <laughs> and so wow. I broke the news and finally, you know, so I didn't believe it until we were actually done mm. because we've been trying to record all along. So sometimes in life you have this plan. This is what I want to do. But as Bishop says, always leave elbow room for God. Correct. to do his thing because he yeah. knows what's ahead of you he knows your destiny he knows what you want he knows what you should be and what you should learn and in what frame of mind you should be in mm. so have your plan but leave help room for god correct yeah correct, correct. yeah it's interesting um that you point that out you've given us quite an overview of the entire project and we're going to get into the nitty gritty, yeah. so to speak. <laughs> um, but maybe somebody's watching this for the first time and they don't know who Marion is. They don't know who Marion Obura is. They don't know anything about you. What would you say? Uh, How would you introduce yourself? Because I know you as a worship leader extraordinaire, an intercessor, <laughs> <laughs> uh, a woman who is passionate about the word of God, um, a veteran in service to worship ministry, uh, a great example, a fine example of a Proverbs 31 woman. So that's what I know you as. But what about somebody who's just put this on for the first time and they're watching this? Who is Marion Obura? Let's start there. Base. Basic. Level. Like, who yeah. is Marion Obura? Yeah. Oy, oy, oy. Marion Obura, to start with, is. I'm a child of God. Mm. I love God. Mm. Um, I believe my purpose in life is to create a positive difference wherever I go. And that's who I am and that's what I strive to do when I'm at work, uh, when I come to church, in my family. I try to bring a positive difference. I, what I do, my role, I'm a daughter first. Um, a sibling, a sister, I'm an event planner, mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm a marketing consultant, I'm a trainer, I have all these gifts, a uh, moderator, and most importantly, the reason I was born is I'm a, a music minister, and that's what people need to know, and I, I'm all about um, Whatever I do, I really wanted to transform someone's life. Maybe that comes from the mission and the vision of this church because right. I realize that that's, that's what I want to see at the end of the day. Whatever I want, whatever I do, it needs to make a difference. And so I don't do things for the sake of doing them. I want to see a difference. I want to do them because I believe it should be done because I'm convicted. And so I'll never give, do something and give it 50%. Mm. I will give it my all. And I'm really passionate and energetic as yeah. well. Yeah. So how do all these streams flow into the river of transformative ministry, worship ministry? If you say that is why you're here on this planet, how would you say all these uh, streams flow into it? Events planner, daughter, sister, uh, consultant, all those. How do they play and feed into your, your purpose on this planet? Yo, that, that's a very interesting question. I'm still trying to figure that out. I can't mm. say that I fully understand mm. how that all plays in. And this is it. Um, 
I used to think having the ability to have different gifts was not a blessing mm -hmm. because you they, they all in my time there was a point where you had to say who are you and what do you do and the answer had to be the one thing mm -hmm. um, but here I am I, I, I sing I, I, I do events I do all these things how do I package that mm -hmm. and I didn't even think it was possible to package until one day I was talking to someone and um, what someone in my business group and he was like, you need to speak to a personal branding uh, consultant. Mm. And I was like, but why? I mean, and, and, and I did. It was just a session of just sharing, just trying to unpack all that I am and seeing how to package it. And so how, does, how do all these things feed into my, my purpose in life? For, for starters, um, being a marketing consultant, which is something that really came out during uh, the COVID season, is that having my marketing background really did help, does help me figure out how to put, how to communicate a message across. So when it came to the single, like, you know, I had times with um, the people who helped me to do the marketing and let's sit down, let's plan, you know, let's don't just wake up in the morning and say today, you know, um, let's do this. So what are we trying to communicate? What's the message? What's the objective? So m my experience in marketing has allowed me to use that and to continue using that in, in my calling. And even when we're doing things in the music department, uh, if you're going to have a Kesha, you know, you don't just spring up one morning and, and say, how do we get the buy-in of everyone within the department to, to, to get psyched up for this Kesha, you know, because that's, that's someone's sleep you're taking, you know. Right. So how do you make it, you know, how do you make it uh, sound and, and, and how do you make them take ownership of this thing and say, we really have to do it. So that's marketing. In terms of my events planning skills, it's really helped me to, um, to think through stuff and to plan. And, and in events, you work with timelines as well. And so I, I know, for example, that for me to... Um, to have released this song on the 4th of September, I should have done things by a certain time. So there's a lot of planning that goes into it and, and strategy as well. So that all, you know, comes in. When it comes to being a trainer uh, in terms of business, that the skill of, you know, once you train, you train. Yes. And um, it's helped me to train my vocalist. It's helped me to train the people I work with in the music department in my church. So it all, it, I think it's, this year that everything just started making sense, that everything is kind of interrelated. But the, the yeah. common thing mm. is that I'm using my voice. Yes. I'm using my voice for all mm. these things. Mm. Yeah. And so I'm just in the business of connecting. Wow. People. So that, that kind of like um, shows the power of writing a vision down. Mm. You know, it says in Habakkuk 2, it says write the vision mm. make, make it, it plain. plain so that all those who read it may mm. be able to run with it so yeah in that sort of sense then like you said people are able to buy in or or feel invested that this is also part of my 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 agenda my vision and they would like to run with it yeah um yeah. so you mentioned a number of people a number of individuals uh so someone's saying uh, they're hearing Sharon, they're hearing Mark, all these people. We don't know who they are. <laughs> okay. And um, you actually um, affectionately called them God's excellence. Will you tell us a little bit about God's excellence, this team of God's excellence? Okay. Uh, so the music department that I, I serve in, uh, we, we we are many, right? And I think we're three or five worship leaders right now. And I've heard in the vineyard, in the, you know, that when Marion is leading, just be prepared to repeat, and repeat and repeat and repeat. And um, and I know sometimes it 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 gets a bit too much, and I try to measure. But I'm I'm all about excellence. I really don't understand or even contemplate just doing something half-baked because it's a service whether it's a Wednesday whether it's a Sunday I want to give God my best I will never just say um, just because it's a service let's just go in uh, and let's not practice and then unless 
you know, you really had no choice, but you have the time, then if you want to give God your best musically, then you will practice, then you will put time into it. And so over the years, especially the last two years, uh, during COVID especially, I started seeing my creativity increasing and I wanted to do something different. And the people who got that were the people I was working with every every two weeks, so mm. to speak, every two to four weeks when I would uh, administer with them. Mm. So I always work with Sharon, who is one of the backup vocalists. Mm. And I started working with her uh, I think a year ago and the reason she was brought on my team uh, as opposed to the other teams was because Sharon, you know Sharon, Sharon is just happy-go-lucky and right. she's like, you know, the only person who can manage Sharon, <laughs> you know, is, is, is Myron and she's just a happy soul. Um, so I was a bit nervous, I'm like, because I'm very serious when it comes to practice and she's right. all joking and everything and I'm like, oh yo, yo. but she has turned out to be this amazing uh, you know, pillar that I hang on. So there's Sharon, and then there's Stella, and uh, Stella is also another vocalist. And the first time I met Stella or interacted with Stella, I was literally scared. And you know, and we were not seeing eye to eye, eye, to eye at all. And so for COVID to come, I think everyone, I don't know how, but she came, I think she traveled and then came back. And we started this whole process of working together so she's then put in my team again i was like lord lord yeah. benzi this time you put me in a fix you give yeah, me sharon straight. stella and then there's sandra as well who again was also with me for a year so there's three who i work with uh every month regular. on a regular so they kind of know my way of working for starters you come on time for practice don't come late for my practice you will have a problem if you come late for my practice uh learn your lines let's not be reading you know the songs off because if you're reading a song off a phone how how if it's not ministering to you how will you minister to someone, to someone else? else yeah then there's manu who uh, for some reason was the first person who i felt the inkling the conviction to talk to on the first of january this year and he does the tenor and uh, then there is Benzi, who, who came in because Sharon got sick. And Benzi, I've been working with her since Divine Days. And yeah. she's just one of those friends who, who has been there for me. Yeah. And she's a, an amazing vocalist as well. And we did Divine together. And she's the only person I know who has been doing voice classes consistently for at least three years. And so it was nice to have her. And then, of course, uh, this Caleb, who I call this gifted keyboard player, who is amazing. And he has always believed in me. I have um, Eloge, who is the lead guitarist. <laughs> oh, Eloge, yes. <laughs> young, young, young. <laughs> um, who is very gifted. And then Philo, uh, who, I know it's Philip, but we call him Philo. He's the drummer and I also got to start working with him about one and a half years ago. Um, I think I played with him straight for one and a half years mm -hmm. and that allowed us to find a, work find a way rhythm. of working. If right. I mean, we have other drummers and, 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 and I've worked with other drummers, I've worked with Amani and Amani gets me as well. But working with Philo during COVID was because there was nothing to do so practice is longer <laughs> you know what i'm saying so and then what i really appreciate about philo is he he gives me feedback can we do this instead and and so i like that yeah. and so he's also part of the team and then josh who is who plays the bass i call him my producer because again he tells me as it is ah today you didn't think good you know <laughs> you know yeah. and it's very hard to find people who can tell you the truth even when you don't want to hear it mm. and you're, they're telling you the truth not to hurt you but because they want the best for you correct and he may be younger than i am but i really respect his opinion yeah and so that's the god's excellence team and what the common thing about all these people is they value practice they value getting it right right yeah and right. we just wanted to be excellent for god uh -huh. wow what a team sounds like um you were blessed with 
gifts, numerous gifts and um, different personalities. And it's as though the Lord had constructed this team in eternity to kind of like shape and mold you and even yeah. create the project. Um, as you were talking about that, you mentioned one person who has known you for a long time. And obviously, <laughs> it would be great to go back and talk about what you referred to just in passing. You said you worked with Mbenzi um, on this project who came in not at the very inception of it, but as unforeseen circumstances had come, started partnering with you. However, you have worked with Mbenzi from years, 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 years ago. Mm -hmm. What can you say um, is different from your experience with working with Benzi from Divine Days? What is Divine? Who is Divine? And now working on this newer project, Lord, You Are Good. Yeah, all right. Let's take us back. Divine. Yes. Ta -da! Divine. Oh yeah. my gosh. Divine was started in 2001. Wow. T this year is our 20th anniversary. Mm. And Divine... First of all, the name came from my big brother, mm. our manager at that time, mm. Mike Gitonga. Mm. And um, we, we, would, we just wanted to sing something different. I think at that point, we were only doing brass music. And so when I finished, uh, when I cleared uh, Daystar University and came now back home uh, to church, um, there was a, I really wanted us to, to also do some of the music that was happening at that time. Mm. And so Divine was that group that we, that we thought would be a nice instrument to use by practicing and then uh, singing a song as a special uh, performance during the service to just introduce this different kind of music to the church. And uh, that's who Divine is. We, we were a team of many people. My responsibility at that time was also to, to manage the music under Mike. Um, Benzi at the time, I, I think I was the only lady for like a couple of months and I was like, I can't sing alone, I need other people. And so Benzi was in the choir at that time in the worship, the youth worship team and she was, I mean, she could sing but that, that was it, we were just singing and what I've seen her do is really grow over over time and her confidence grow her her growth in god she's one of those people who really encourages me uh spiritually and and benz is the whole person who will say you know god is not a sadist you know there is a reason for yeah. this you know let's just keep praying let's just keep praying and so working with her now she's become a really strong pillar for me in this new project. Whereas before I was like her teacher throughout. Mm. Uh, this is how we do. Because at that point when Divine had started, I think I was, the, in, for the vocalists, I was the only one who had ministered outside in other churches, in other towns. And so I was bringing the knowledge that I got from Daystar through Sing Africa, the worship team, mm -hmm. and bringing it to, to them. Mm -hmm. Now, fast forward 20 years later, I'm learning a lot from Benzi because she has really taken music seriously. She's managing the choir. She even started going for voice classes before me. And she's really a powerhouse. And she just has my best interest at heart, for real. And now I depend on her for, hey, what's the new voice, uh, uh, voice technique that we need to learn? I depend on her to manage the finances when money comes in how do we distribute it uh, among the team and creating a ratio like if we, we're planning big like you know Please. if you get you know how do you split that money how what percentage do you say, save what percentage goes to the producer so she's done all that and she's just yeah so i've watched her grow to the point where right now i i'm almost dependent like you know you, that kind of person who you want in your circle right to help, yeah. yeah. So that's who Benzi has been and wow. how things have changed from divine to now. From divine to now. And so now we're here. Lord, you are good. Yes, he is. How did that come about? Simple as that. Tell Yo. us from the very core. And someone is thinking, okay, 
I want to make an amazing song like Myron did. How do I do that? What happened? What was it? Was there an experience you had? A dream? A phone conversation maybe you uh, had with somebody? What was the genesis of this project? Okay. I think I will start by saying that ever since Divine recorded um, their last album, which was many years ago, I have never had the desire to go back to studio. And so whenever Bishop Rutiri has been, whenever he talk, he, he has a meeting with the music department every year. And he always says, you know, we want to hear new music, new. I have always just kept quiet, but in my heart, I have resisted. And so what happened this year is, um, and I think I've said it in my testimony, on, on day 13, he, we were praying for the musicians and, and the psalmists in the house. And I think that some, the, 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 the title was, I hear a new, a new sound from the throne room of God, and talking about a new sound. And I think there was a scripture there, First Chronicles, I think 5, 13, 14, where he says, the trumpeters and the singers were as one, and the cymbals and everything came up as one. And if I was to paraphrase it, the move of God came and there was a cloud and it filled the place to the point where the priests could not minister. And I was like, yo, I have never seen the scripture all this time. And, and I was like, I didn't even know that even the drums are in the Bible. I didn't know that singers and trumpeters can start as one, even the band and you know everything. And so I made it my prayer on that day that, Lord, I really, what I did is I always have this journal that I write, uh, my prayers when I fast. And so I, I wrote it in this journal that came to me from Keziah, yes. Keziah Kaula. Yes. <laughs> and I just wrote and I remember writing and saying, and I read, Lord, I pray that you reveal to me through your spirit what you want me to sing this year. Lord, I pray for a new song or songs that come straight from the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that was the start. Yeah. And after that, I... January 13th. January 13th. And after that, I think after the fast, we had a meeting with the choir and we were aligning everything together. And I remember being asked whether I had anything to say at the end. And then I said, quoted the same scripture as one sound and I said, you know what? I have never been so convinced of my music calling than I am right now. And I don't think I've taken it seriously. And hearing people like CC Wine and so I got an interest in during the, the prayer and fasting period, being so bold about their calling, so bold about the Holy Spirit. You know, someone just talking about the Holy Spirit and I said, this is what I want, this is what I need to do. And I've never been more convinced that I need to serve God like I was on day 13 and after the 21 day fast. And I said to the team, I want to give God my all. And I remember telling the choir, like, come with me. If you don't, I'm just going to go ahead. Right. And you can catch up if you want. But I am sold. I'm moving right. on. Right. And so then on, went back to work. Life is usual. Nothing's changed. Mm. And... You know, and then one day, uh, someone, uh, I'll call him Brother X. <laughs> and he was like, I'd like to talk to you. Uh, could we talk on this date? And I was like, why can't we talk now? Mm. He said, no, no, no. Let's talk on Sunday after the youth service. And I was a bit nervous. Um, and, uh, and then we fast forward we, we met and <laughs> if I could stand which I can't do right now he he was so nervous he was like don't laugh I was like what <laughs> just tell me okay let's go sit there and so we go and say I'm like what is happening okay Usi cheke, which means don't laugh said so I had a dream and in this dream I saw you singing this song and it goes something like this Usi cheke. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't laugh at my, my, my voice. And so I listened and listened and listened. I said, okay, fine. All right. Just send it to me. And, and you know, I wanted to be polite, right? right? At that point, I'm not making any connection with that happened on day 13. 
So after the service, I went home. And normally on Sundays, I, I kind of tune off, yeah. uh, tune out and it's family time, you know. So Monday night, I li- he sent me this song. And so I listened to it. And when I heard it in his voice, I literally saw myself doing it. And I could relate to it so well. So I sent him a message. I'm like, how, how is this song so me? I was like, but I told you I dreamt that you were doing it. And I was like, okay. And so after that, I think when he came to, I realized there was nothing stopping me. And I remember writing in my same prayer journal and saying, God, I've been saying I want a new song. I've been saying I want a song to sing. Here it is. Here it is. There is nothing stopping me now. And so the first thing I did is call Caleb, who has been waiting for this. They said, Caleb, I have a song. And of course, it was very raw. So first and foremost, I had to learn the song my way because the agreement was no one should ever hear me sing this song except for you. Delete, delete, (laughs) delete. (laughs) So I learned the song and then I sent it to Caleb and then now we started working. So it, it was in a certain way in the raw format, but now with Caleb, I was able to now really, you know, flesh it out, flesh it out and mm. create. Where do we go up? Do we go down? What what mm. happens? And so I worked with Caleb for I think two two weeks, two or three weeks, mm. and then now we brought in the instrumentalists. Mm. So we brought in, as I mentioned, the rest: Eloise, right. Josh, right. and and Philip, mm. and. They also had their own ideas. And so, again, it started it's morphing. Cooking. Again, yeah. it's, it's, it's ma- building up. And then after that, we now, I think, uh, that must have been now just before Easter, like two weeks before Easter, we brought them in. Mm. So I think we actually practiced uh, the Thursday before Easter. Was it Good Friday? In the mo- early in the morning. Mm. And then I was like, now all we have to do is get the singers and we're into the studio and this thing is done. It's a wrap, we start working on the next song. And that wasn't the case. That wasn't the case. So then the singers come in. And first of all, I had to call each and every one of them. Do you think, you know, and they all accept, they said yes. So we all came in for practice. And the practice now had to be at 7 a.m. because uh, we normally have practice at 9 a.m. for Sunday. Wow. So whatever we had to do, had to be earlier than that Mm -hmm. so you can imagine i am asking these people to do away with their sleep they come at seven on a whole saturday of which most of some of the instrumentalists are actual producers and and do music for people so they work on friday nights and they're night people because somehow that's when creativity just flows and then i'm telling them be here at seven i was like i don't know if it's gonna work but they came we started working on it so at the beginning i think i remember the first time we had the vocalist come and like can we do this i was like first learn the song as is let's get it and then now we start bringing in ideas and i remember the day that we were calling the idea day i had to pray because i was like god i already feel this song i am very confident about what this song sounds like uh give me the grace to listen to everyone's idea to the end. You know, there's a way you can listen to someone and they start and like, no, 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 that's not gonna work. That's not gonna work. And I was like, no, I need to listen to each and everybody and let's measure and let's see how it goes. Does it work? Does it not work? And respond well. Because I can be very, you know, I'm like, I know what, when I know what I want, I know it. So how did that day go? Ideas day? There were many ideas. <laughs> Obviously. There's a lot Everyone of people was given involved. an opportunity to bring one or two ideas uh, and i think we implemented most of most of them um oh the old part of the beginning i remember manu came up that came up with that and i was like really <laughs> you know and then yeah. we tried to that and there's a part where we go powerful that came from sharon yeah. um there were parts that came from different i mean those are the two distinct ones that i remember mm-hmm. because I didn't see them. I mean, I really didn't. But mm. that's what happens when you open the the door for people to bring in right. um, ideas, and then 
they now owned the song. It was no longer about, this is Marion's song. It was our, our song. song. And so we started learning it. And then we got to the point where like, we're ready for studio. Yeah. And so I decided, you know what? Um, Benzi, uh, as the person who handles uh, the money for, for my, rec uh, not recording, but for my, my, my music. And the reason I say this is because um, we call, well, he's my big brother, but for the sake of this, yeah. Pastor Mike, yeah. uh, Benzi, mm -hmm. Danu, Kate, mm -hmm. and Faith Rambi, seven years ago, more than seven years ago, put money together, around 50,000, and said, and gave it to me on my birthday, and said, this is for you to pay for your first, set, your first, you know, whenever you go to studio. Thankfully, they kept that money. Uh, because if it was given to me, we were going straight to Majestic, which is my events company. Right. And so they kept it. And um, fast forward, so she's, so that money was kept. I think she was responsible for it, but I think Faith was the one who was keeping it in some account. And so, you know, we, we come, we, we move forward. So Benzi was like, okay, um, how, how do we, Huh. Okay, please pay for my voice classes. Because at the beginning of the year, I was like, yeah, I'm going to do my music. And so she pays for this voice class and she pays for two sessions. And I never had, I never went to any. So I called them like, okay, I think now I'm ready. So I just want this voice class just to, you know. Yeah, just get it over Just clean with. it up, <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. and, and that, because yeah, we're good. Wow. Not the case. The notes I took in my music journal. Yeah. Ah, I was so far. Just, just the techniques that I was learning on that first day were so different. We were singing, and I remember sending the song that we had practiced and recorded to the voice coach, Lydia, and she responded, oh, this is nice and everything, and then she breaks down what needs to change. I was like, how dare you? <laughs> like, yeah, right. What is it? And then at the end, she says, I love it. I'm like, no, you don't. Da -da -da -da. So it was very hard as someone who's done music for 20 years to hear such feedback mm. that, you know, you're doing it wrong. Uh, but I took it in, took a couple of days and like, okay. And so now that first class was a very big eye opener. And then when she actually played the song back to me in her voice and how it should be, I was like, wow. And so I sent it to the, <laughs> to the God's Excellence team and I'm a, everyone was like, were we actually going to studio like this? Oh my gosh, we have been saved. You know, because musically, you know, we tend to sing from here. And one of the things I remember is that using the right technique allowed us to practice for hours and not get tired. So I could lead morning and, and, and back up in the afternoon and I'm still fine and I can sing the next day. Right. So that's one of, just one of the things that I got from those, uh, those sessions. So. It took us a month for me to take the information that Lydia had taught me. Yeah, put it to practice. Put it to practice and then also teach uh, the backup vocalist. And at that time, Benzi had not joined because she was just managing the money at that point. Mm. Um, breakfast for the crew, lunch for the team and all that stuff. Mm. So just, I mean, it was a month. And then now we met back with the instrumentalist and, and Caleb being the music teacher he is. I'm like, so this, how is that? You know, now you think you're yeah. ready to go. And he's like, we're getting there. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, when are we going to get there? Mm. And so now we, now we got Lydia now to then come in for a session with the entire team. And we just had one session with her and things just took shape. Yeah. I really do feel like I'm dreaming because from the bottom of my heart, releasing it in the way we did was a true blessing. Mm. I, I didn't know it was possible. I remember the Thursday before, we knew, Benzi and I knew we needed a bit of money to, to, to do it. And we didn't know how it was gonna turn out. And then for him now, we had even talked to some suppliers and like, just come in 
do this, we'll pay you when we make the money next week. You know, like, we'll pay you next week. And so, to come on Sunday and knowing that God provided the money for us to get wardrobe, for us to, you know, because it, it's your first live performance, right. right? You want to use that performance and use it on create a video so the lighting must be right the maker you want it as good as it was when you recorded and for the recording thanks to god we really went all out we had in addition to the music we had makeup we had food we had the whole shebang we had a good studio so i'm like hmm now the live one i mean we can't drop from there but god provided the money for that we we're able to to get lighting god blessed us with screens Oh, my dad got us this. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was just like, yeah. I came and I was so surprised. I was asking Josh, what is this? Are these the parking lights? <laughs> no, I mean, these are not parking lights. Yeah. And it was so surreal. And then the other thing was, my family mm. came. I mean, they showed up. Uh, you know, we've all grown and people go to different churches and, and stuff. So I'm the only one who is still in this church. And to see Georgina come, to see Clarice come, to see Manasseh come, to see my cousins come, come with their husbands, to see close family friends come and another cousins and and my, my boss, my clients come. And I was just like, it was overwhelming mm. and so after i think monday i was just still i was just kept replaying the whole thing did this just happen again it's god's will if it's i think i've heard bishop saying and many people say if it's god's will it's god's will and it truly was god's will and since then i only had the courage to um check out the views <laughs> <laughs> Oh, literally yeah. yesterday night mm. which was literally about 60 hours after it went live yeah. because there's this fear that oh what if the, what if you just find 10 views? i mean 10 views is fine but you're like ah, we've spent so much money on this project you know it would be a shame if it you know mm. didn't bless many but one thing that was important to me was just obey just obey and Just obey. Yeah. And so I, I checked and I was like, even in my own business, I've, I've had, I have a channel for my business. It's never gotten as many views as it does right now. Mm. And I was like, is this real? And there were many comments. I, I, I remember Eloge sending me a message on Monday night, please respond <laughs> to the messages. And I didn't expect that. And so just the love that I've received from people has been great. And um, I still feel like I'm dreaming. I really wish and pray I could do this for forever. Why um, not? Yes, so God and I, I have this. Expect from here on. So we really, after like about a week or two, we're going to start writing again. And um, we have a number of songs. So I have to sit down and go through them again and write some more and then figure out what song number two is going to be and so this time around we're going to record a number we're going to put a number together and then hopefully now do an actual full album launch god Perfect. willing a year from now there you go. and um, it's been said guys a year from it's now that's the friend now it's on day. air oh you my know, gosh <laughs> yeah. so yes so, so we can all hold their accountable to it yes um yes and, and, and I think when they say if you want something, don't just write down your plan, but make it public. Yeah. I think that's what Chuck Wickman says, make it public and that you know, gives you the right pressure to keep going. And so yes, so that's the plan. Um, I'm very open to what God you know, wants to do. I would love to do this uh, full time eventually. I know he's working on certain things in me, within me for me and uh, I am literally just flowing like he's on the driver's seat right. and I'm getting surprised every day yeah. because and I was just like I'm not I'm not touching the handbrake <laughs> there are days you're just like 
yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but other than that i i know i'm better off you know under the shadow of his wings than anywhere else so i'm i'm sold out i'm so sold out to him what's taking so long what's took you so long <laughs> We've been waiting. Uh, many of us have been waiting. Many of us. That's why, like you said, when you told Caleb, he was like, "Yes." <laughs> <laughs> We've all been waiting. Mark, all of us. It, What's uh, even even um, your spiritual father, I believe, has been waiting on you to do it, saying like, because he's been saying. It, so, <laughs> yeah, he yeah, said like, what "Finally, to, yeah, what it's about to, time." Right. I've gotten that from many people. First thing is fear. Mm right so my first fear was music i don't know if anyone's watched sister act but music does not put food on the table has always been yeah. <laughs> you know in my head i was like no 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 and i even remember when mike everyone was having a tough time deciding what kind of business to go into there were two choices music or events because those are my two clear strengths at that moment mm -hmm. and i remember telling mike at that point was uh let me do events because i'm not about to go in front of the camera i just want to be in the back do my job Correct. And, and and that's it so the first was fear fear of provision fear of there's so many people who sing like how will you make it and the second was i really didn't i always had the feeling that if i did music um it would clearly not just be for the four walls of my church but it would go beyond mm. and i really didn't want people to know who i was musically if i wasn't married <laughs> it's a shocking thing and because society says after a certain time you should get married and then have your first kid and have your second kid and then da 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 da, da. Mm. and all this time i was like i am not yeah this is my plan I am not going to go, I'm not going to do music outside my church until I get married. Because there's this fear that, you know, if I do music and then what if, what if it, it becomes big, yeah? Will the person love me for me? <laughs> or will they love me for what the this music, big this big thing that the music brings? Yeah. And so that was, that was the reason. Yeah. Fear and, and, and my plan, it was going against my plan. I'm like, you guys don't understand. First, I have a business, it must get to a certain level, then I must be married, you know, done with the kids, mm -hmm. then now we can think. That, that was my plan. Okay. So what sure. broke that fear, what broke um, this barrier stopping you from actually stepping into what God called you to do? What was it that put all that to an end? The fear? All right. The first, the, the, the first thing that... that, that really was um you know sometimes god allows shakings in your life and uh, when he wants you to do something he allows certain things to happen and i remember there was a bit of a you know something that happened in the music department that i was not too happy about and i was like you know it was a good thing now when i look back on it it's a good thing because then whatever that whatever happened, which was bringing the entire department together to practice together, yeah, as opposed five. to, because now when, once, I think it's five years back, five years after when I was telling Benzi, I was like, do you know I would not have had time mm. to do any of this mm. if we were left back in the divine days where I was singing every Sunday? Mm. You know, thank God, it may not have felt right mm. at that time, mm. but even Lord, you're good, would not be here if I was singing every Sunday. So that was the first shaking, and that was around 2016. And I remember, because I remember talking to my mom about it. And three years later, something else in the music department happened, right. and another shaking. And of course, there's always tears and stuff like that. And then once things work, you know, you relax again. And until now this year, 2022 three years later again it happens something a shaking happens like life happens in, in the department and um, this time I was very thank you God for opening my eyes because this time 
I could tell there was something happening. These shakings were not just shakings, just uh, I shouldn't have played the victim, but what was the message? And the shaking for me was, it was there to get me out of my comfort zone. Wow. And my comfort zone has been ministering in the house of transformation. I enjoy it. I love it. I even remember saying, I will, this is all I want to do. I just want to minister here and that's it. So when Bishop speaks, oh, you know, should go out, I'm like, mm, I'm fine right where I am. And so uh, there was a bit of a shaking for me in my life within the music department around February and I was able to recognize and say, ha, huh, if I don't want to be here in 2025, I best listen to what God is saying and move. Because I did know what I needed to do. But because of the fear and like pushing it aside and just saying, my plan has not yet been fulfilled. And this thing kept coming back and coming back. And so I, I took, I was like, no, this time I'm going to make it no, we're doing it differently. Uh, I got a music journal and I said, I'm going to challenge myself. This music journal better be full of music dates of what needs to happen, whether it's recording, performing, whatever, practice, lessons, mm. everything that's music related. And that's what I did. Wow. 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 Okay. Okay. That's great. So that's the fear element. What about this uh, belief? that you held on to in that um, I'm not going to step into this because it's going to impede um, this other thing that I, I, I want for my life. So I'll hold that off until this is taken care of. What was that now? How was that dealt with? <laughs> One day, uh... Well, this is a bit personal, but anyway, uh, maybe it will help someone. You know, as a single person, um, most women, I mean, they, they dream of their wedding day. So what if this doesn't happen? Does that mean that your calling mm. takes a back seat? Until. Until? So, you so what if it doesn't? Uh, so it's like you were holding God hostage. Yes, yeah, so I was holding God hostage, like, I'm not going to do this until, until this. Do. And at that point, I was driving, yeah. and I got that aha moment. Mm. I was like, whoa, live your life, Marion. Mm. Don't wait for anything. Mm. Don't give God conditions. Wow. Just do your right. part. Work within your calling. And even my ministration at that point started changing. Mm. Even the way I lead started, so I'm like, no. I'm not going to wait. I'm going to do what God has called me to do. Yeah. If someone sees it, and you know, because I've, I've been told, oh, when you mama wa kanisa, in Kiswahili, you know, you're the woman of church. Yeah. And in my generation, well, that's not a, <laughs> that's not a very nice way of attracting a man. <laughs> yeah. you mama wa kanisa. And I said, you know what, if this is going to mean I'm single t to my dying day, so be it. So be it. I'm going to serve my God. And that's, that's what changed, that drive. And I was looking at a billboard on that road and that came to my mind. And from there, I decided I'm going to live my life. And, and then COVID happened. And so I started seeing myself <laughs> taking videos, my own videos and posting them to the world. I'm like, are you crazy? Like I, you know, and doing all that. So, and just getting out of that cocoon. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So if, if you're single, um, I don't know where is that camera, but if, if, if you're single and you're waiting for this man to come and sweep you off your feet so that you can have this life, forget it. Just live your life. Okay. Like God has gifted you. You have a purpose in life, right? So just live it and do it. And, and just like Ruth, you know, Ruth was busy looking for, what was it? She was looking for food. She was cleaning. <laughs> she was cleaning and looking for something to take back to her mother-in-law, right? So you do what God has called you to do. And then voila, Boaz may appear or may not appear, but the point is be found working. Be found faithful. Be found faithful. So that, that was for Amen. me. Yeah. Amen. Amen.
all the single ladies. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is great. This is great. That's gold, actually. That's gold. I think what you've just done now is um, administered deliverance, just like that. Amen. You see, someone can say, "Well, what's the point?" But now you can see that there's uh, people being set free, mindsets being reorchestrated. Mm. Just in knowing that I need to focus on why God brought me here on this earth, and um, yeah. it has nothing to do with anyone else. Because at the end of the day, I'll stand before Him, Amen, and I will answer. Come on, yeah. I'll answer for 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 everything that He gave me. And we know that He got upset with the servant who buried his talent. His oh my gosh, <laughs> that is so true. Yeah. I, so I, I remember yeah. <laughs> in March literally yeah. writing a prayer in my prayer journal mm. um, and saying, please forgive me for not using my music gift to my fullest potential. potential. I'm sorry for holding it back. I actually repented in March 1st when I read it. Yeah. It, it says that yeah. and, and then you get your song. So here we are. After repentance, how good is that? Right away. It was right away. In, it was almost instant. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm just so grateful to be sitting here and to seeing this and observing this and listening. I remember we sat down together about two years ago um, at the peak of the pandemic, <laughs> talking about uh, worship, the heart of worship. Mm. It was May 2020. And now here we are. September 2022, two years down the road. And it's amazing to see that how things can actually shift in two years' time, two and a half years, so to speak, or whatever. Mm. And I'm only shocked or amazed or trying to even place it in my mind what will happen two and a half years from now. Yeah. But it just started with saying yes. Yeah. It just started with God asking Moses, what's in your hand? And Moses just said, all I have is this staff. Mm -hmm. He says, put it down, I'll mm -hmm. show you mm -hmm. what we can do with that staff. Mm -hmm. And so I just like to encourage everyone who's watching this right now. The Lord is just asking, what do you have in your hands? You just put it down and who knows? You might be the deliverer of your people. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Someone might come out of Egypt and step into their promised land. There are people waiting on you to say yes to God so that they may be liberated from the chains Come on. and the bondage of Pharaoh. Mm. So the Lord is asking you today in this moment, will you say yes? Mm -hmm. Will you accept my call? Will you put away your excuses of being a stammerer? Come will on. you put away your fear of Pharaoh? Mm. And will you walk with and he says, I'll provide everything you need. He says, oh, if you think you're going to make excuses, I'm sending your brother. Mm. And the Lord is sending you Aaron, but you just have to say yes. You just have to respond to the call and you will be amazed. And so, Marion, wow, this is, <laughs> this is amazing. We can go on and on, um, but you've touched on so many jewels. And I want all of us to just chew on this, chew on this. It's a life story in many ways. But a testimony always, always points to Jesus. And so my brothers and sisters, I see the hand of God on this story. And the hand of God is on your story too. Amen. I would have loved to get more into Majestic, as you said. But we're here to talk about what God has done in ministry. Mm. We're here to talk about what God called you to do on this planet. Majestic is just the arm Come that on. feeds Mm -hmm. that feeds what God put you on this planet from. And I thank God for the spirit of excellence that he put on Daniel, that he has put on you. Amen. And thank you for inspiring us and challenging us. If there's any last thing that you'd like to share with the people out there listening to this, watching this, I think now is a good time to do so. Okay. Yeah. Live a life of full surrender to God and you'll be amazed at what he will do in your life.
just surrender. That's it. Surrender. Surrender. A few years back, Marion said it's a full-on response. Worship is a full-on response. And part of that response is surrender. Just let go and leave the handbrake. You say, Jesus, <laughs> yes. take the wheel, but we're holding the handbrake right there. Yes. Let go of the handbrake. Stop. Yes. Yeah. He's in control. God is in control. And I receive that as well. Yeah. I receive that word. And so, my friends, my brothers and sisters, as we always say, good morning, good afternoon, good night, depending on where you're listening from. This is a check-in session in the hot spot. And we will be back again like we never left <laughs> two years from now Come on. to hear about this album that Marin spoke about. Because by the time you're watching this, right, and we're referring to this, it'll be a year after the album has been out. Amen. Amen. And she has said it. And so I'm just reminding <laughs> you guys. So my friends, my brothers and sisters, see you once again. Thank you. God bless. Oh